Okay, here's our demo video for our baked custards week. I'm gonna teach you guys how to do a cheesecake and a creme brulee. I think a lot of you have done cheesecake in my class already, but I wanna go ahead and show this. Creme brulee is also a very, very simple recipe. But one thing you need to understand, baked custards, those custards have that high egg content, right? So those egg proteins, we need to coagulate those properly so that these do set up nicely so that they are thick. Your baked custards, I, off the top of my head, I can't think of an example, but nine times out of 10, your baked custards are gonna be mostly solid, uh, solidified, coagulated egg custard, okay? So it's nothing soupy, nothing runny. It should be relatively solid, let's say a nice pudding texture, depending on what you're doing. Obviously, cheesecakes are a little bit thicker than say your creme brulee, okay? But I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna grab the camera and I'm gonna talk as I show you guys how to put it together. All right, we're going over to the big mixer today. So I got all my mise en place here for my cheesecakes. A nice softened, soft cheese, cream cheese, what I'm using today. There's a couple different options that you can use. Here I'm using sour cream. In your book, the cream cheesecake recipe says heavy whipping cream at the bottom, but I actually substitute it for a sour cream. And I made this one actually with just cream and lemon juice, allowed it to thicken, sit at room temperature, and actually looks like a pretty good product. So we're gonna go ahead and start getting these bad boys in there. So I'm gonna drop the sour, or the cream cheese, sour cream. I'm gonna drop the cream cheese in the mixer first, and we need to paddle it. Make sure that we paddle it until it is smooth ready to go we want to make sure the name of the game with cheesecake is no lumps we do not want any lumps of the cheese of the sour cream of sugar we don't want lumps of anything so first step is we're dropping our cream cheese into the mixer with the paddle attachment boom and we're gonna get this bad boy running okay So my cream cheese has been softened probably for about two hours now. If I'm doing a cheesecake, I suggest you leave your cream cheese out at room temperature just like butter. This is very similar to a creamy method recipe. So treat your cream cheese like your butter, let it sit out, softens it up, makes it a little bit easier for you to get all the lumps out. Then I still suggest using your paddle and paddling out all the lumps out of the cream cheese for a decent amount of time. So I'm actually gonna increase the speed on this. let it run for a little bit lumps name of the game is no lumps right so what's the other thing you think we're gonna do a lot we're gonna be scraping down the sides of the bowl religiously after we paddle this I'm going to scrape it down scrape the bottom and the sides I'm gonna paddle a little bit more then I'm gonna scrape it again and then I'm gonna start and continue on with the rest of my recipe okay we are going to let this paddle and soften a little bit and then we're gonna come back to it and I'm gonna pop you guys over to creme brulee So as you can see there on the stove, I already have my cream working actually. Very similar to cream on glaze or any of your other custards. We are tempering our eggs. We are tempering our eggs into our hot liquid, which is our cream. So we're gonna be tempering our eggs. We need to get that cream up to heat first. We're gonna combine our egg yolks and sugar, and then we're gonna temper the two together. So that's going back there. I'm gonna go ahead and combine. This is my sugar, a little bit of salt, and egg yolks. A lot of times I actually won't do the salt in this recipe, but just for fun today, I went ahead and put it in there. Depending on how small of a recipe you're doing, you might not even need salt. Get that in there, and then we're gonna start mixing these together. For this recipe, I typically like to incorporate a little bit more air than say the cream on glaze. The cream on glaze, we really just combine the sugar and the egg yolks together and then we've continued on. For this one, I'm actually gonna incorporate a little bit of air. I'm gonna try to 
change that color to more of a light opaque. Break up some of that sugar a little bit more. And then I'm gonna go ahead and temper my eggs, or my milk, my, my dairy product, my cream into my eggs, right? Keep mixing that up there. It's getting hot back here. I do suggest have your pan ready to go for your creme brulee. Now we're getting into baked custards. I don't know if you can see me. We're getting into baked custards, so we're gonna start talking about water baths and baking in water baths, okay? Now, the concept of the water bath is relatively simple. You've got either your small creme brulee pan or say your cheesecake pan in a, another pan, and that's what we are going to fill with water. We essentially are gonna submerge the product about three quarters of the way up the pan. That's the goal with water and we're gonna bake it in the oven. The idea is the water allows for more of an even cooking time. It adds the agent of a little bit of steam, trying to help aid and evenly coagulate the egg proteins in the custard as quickly as possible at the same time. Your cheesecake recipe says that you can do either a water bath or you can bake it without the water bath. It really kind of depends what you want out of your final product. You saw the one video that I showed you guys, uh, I think it was Bon Appetit, where she did the cheesecake, but it was more of a rustic cheesecake in my opinion, more of an old school type cheesecake, brown on the sides, uh, crusty, it cracked open a little bit. That, in my opinion, is what you're gonna see typically when you do a cheesecake baked with no water bath, okay? And if you like that look, if that's what you're going for, more of an old school rustic cheesecake, absolutely. In my opinion, I try to go for a more of a clean New York style cheesecake. So I do the water bath, I suggest the water bath and a little bit of a lower temperature than the recipe actually says. But what you're trying to do is you're trying to keep your cheesecake from browning. And that's all we're trying to do. We want the egg proteins, everything to coagulate at the same time and just coagulate. We really don't want anything caramelizing or browning in the oven. So as you can see, this has already started to change consistency a little bit and color as my cream is coming up to heat back here. It's just about up there. Boom, and then we can go ahead and start tempering our heavy cream, our hot heavy cream into our eggs. Here we go. Now with creme brulee, once again, I do suggest using the water bath. Makes it set up a little bit better. That's the name of the game with creme brulee. We really want it to set up nicely. You don't want it to be runny when the customer gets it. The customer should crack through that sugar caramel coating on top into a nice solid pudding-like consistency, a set, fully set creme brulee. So that water bath is very important. The temperature, however, you might want to play with a little bit. Once again, you really don't want your creme brulee browning, burning, or overcooking so much. So getting the right temperature in your oven, a lot of ovens say 300, eh, it's not quite right. So 300 to 325 is really the temperature that you want to go at for your creme brulee, okay? Now, we've tempered our eggs and our cream together. So now all we have to do is put our creme brulee into our pan. I'm gonna try, I think I can do it with this. Yeah, buddy. We're gonna fill these up almost to the top. We're gonna stay just right underneath the top. Looking good. Now, does creme brulee have to be just plain vanilla? No, you can add flavors into this creme brulee base. You could add chocolate, you could add vanilla, you could add strawberry, you could add all kinds of things. Does this have to be empty just with the creme brulee filling in there? Absolutely not. You could add all kinds of stuff into the bases, put them right into the containers, into the pans, and then put your, your custard on top. This right here is just chunks of Oreo. This is one of the simplest ones that I used to make. I call it a cookies and cream creme brulee. It was such an easy concept. I already had Oreos sitting around, so I just took some leftover Oreos, 
threw them in these containers and then just went ahead and poured my creme brulee base on top. And it was one of my best sellers. You can put fresh fruit in there. You can put apple pie fillings, pie fillings. You can put chocolate chunks. You can put coconut. You can put all kinds of stuff in the creme brulee base. So don't be afraid to try something different and add some different fillings into there, okay? Now, I'm gonna grab the camera because I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this next part as I'm doing it. I'm gonna put this in the oven. Now, because it's a water bath, we're gonna put the pan in the oven first and then we're gonna put the water in. You try to carry these pans full of water over to the oven, you'd be shaking, you're splashing all over yourself. It's just easier to do it once it's in the oven, okay? So, you can see my oven right there. I'm gonna go ahead and put my creme brulee pan in the oven first. And then I'm gonna go ahead and pour my water in. Now these are aluminum foil, disposable little creme brulee pans. They tend to be really light and they can kind of float sometimes. So just be careful when you're putting your water in there. If they start floating, you're done. Don't put any more water. But you wanna to try to put in as much water as you can. About three quarters of the way up the creme brulee dish and then you're ready to go. And we're gonna let these bake for about half an hour. All right, let's go over our cheesecake. See where we're at with this cheese. It's looking really nice and smooth and soft. That's what we want. And we just wanna make sure we get all the lumps out. So I'm gonna scrape it down. Stop, boom, drop. Try to scrape it. Scrape the bottom in a cheesecake. That's where all the chunks like to sit. It's right on the bottom there. Looking pretty good. <laughs> Scrape down your paddle too. Any chunks sit at the top of that paddle. This is one of those times where I will over paddle. <clears throat> you really can't destroy your cream cheese, but you do not want any lumps in your cheesecake. The reason being, anytime you have this chunk still in there, it typically doesn't uh, mix in a nice uniform mixture and bake off. It's still gonna be a chunk of just plain cream cheese in your cheesecake. That's not what you want. So making sure that you thoroughly get out of the, all the lumps before you go any further is very, very important in this cheesecake. If you're doing it straight from cold cream cheese, paddle that cold cream cheese as long as you can. Make sure you get all the lumps out of there. Now, our crust, I don't know if you guys can see me, we're gonna take a little walk real quick. Our crust, I went up ahead and made up an Oreo crust. Same thing as the cookie crumb crust as if a graham cracker. I just put the Oreo chunks through a food processor, a little bit of sugar, and then that melted butter and brought it together, baked it off in a pan. These are sprayed out and there is a circular piece of parchment paper at the bottom of these. That's gonna help me get them out of the pan easier, okay? As you notice, I'm not really a uh, springform pan person. I hate the springform pans. In my experience, even if you plastic wrap and aluminum foil the outside of the springform pan, the water, this is gonna be filled with water, right? It's a water bath. That water seeps through my cheesecake through the pan and sogs the bottom of the crust, deteriorating the product. It really makes it a, a terrible cheesecake at that point, just because of the pan. Um, I do suggest though, if you are using a spring form pan, you plastic wrap the entire pan and aluminum foil the entire pan on the outside, not covering it, but on the outside, on the, on the bottom of the pan, around the bottom of the pan because there's two different pieces on the spring form pans, right? 
and that water is going to seep in and destroy your cheesecake crust. Okay. Um, let me set a timer for the creme brulees. The only time that I personally will use a springform pan is if I'm trying to do one of those standard traditional no crust thick tall cheesecakes. That's the only time. And even then I really hate using them. All right. Let's go ahead and set you back up here and let's go ahead and get some of the other ingredients in. So each step, even if I did this again, I'm going to scrape it again. Just try to get any of those extra chunks that might have been stuck up at the top of the bowl down to the bottom. Uniform mixture. good all right so once we have that paddled pretty well it's not considered the creamy method but in my opinion it's so similar to the creamy method because now we put essentially all of our our sugar and our dry ingredient in there if we have um salt, cornstarch, there's no flour in this recipe, so obviously you're not doing any flour in there, but all the dry ingredients pretty much go in right now, and we're essentially just gonna kind of paddle and cream them all together. When you start adding different ingredients in here, change your mixer speed. You can go pretty fast when you just have cream cheese in there, and you're adding the sugar, you can go pretty fast once it incorporates, not instantly, right? It'll poof up out of there. But once you start getting a lot of the liquid, the eggs and sour cream in there, you really want to slow your speed down. It's going to start making a huge mess and splashing all over the bakery, okay? Now we have a couple different ways that we can flavor cheesecake and I'm going to do both of them for you today. One way we call just flavoring the cheesecake batter, okay? So people love plain cream cheese. Uh, plain cheesecake, right? You really don't have to add anything to it if you don't want to. But if you want to, let's say pumpkin cheesecake in the fall is really popular, you can add, for example, pumpkin flavoring to the entire batter. And now you just have a pumpkin cheesecake changing the flavor of the batter. Or the other way that I also suggest is adding inclusion, so to speak. So if I was doing a chocolate chip, I could add chocolate chunks into there rather than mixing and melting the chocolate into the batter. Or again, if I'm doing pumpkin, I could possibly swirl it into the batter, a pumpkin puree that's sweetened and flavored. And then I have something more of, let's say, a pumpkin swirl cheesecake or a chocolate raspberry swirl cheesecake rather than a specifically flavored cheesecake, okay? And I'm gonna show you how to do both of those today. Um, I had my sugar in there already. Once again, in between steps, we're gonna scrape down the side of the bowl. too bad. We want to make sure that we fully pulverize that sugar.
you guys see a little bit more in there. I don't know if you guys can see what's going on a whole lot, but still just cream cheese, sugar. Still looks really light, white, opaque. Once we start adding that uh, egg content, the custards going in there, it's gonna change the color. down the bowl it's looking really good though nice and smooth you're gonna have just a bunch of small little chunks on the side of the bowl and that's really what you're trying to just knock back down to the bottom of the bowl so that it does fully incorporate To your your paddle your, your paddle attachment probably has a bunch of chunks on it too try to get all those off there scrape down the side of the bowl really well start adding some other stuff in there. So we've got our sugar, we've got our cream cheese. I added the other dry ingredients to the salt. Cornstarch is already in there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and add, this is all of my eggs and egg yolks. And then this is my vanilla. Remember what I said, this is gonna change the consistency of your batter. So now it's gonna get pretty thin. So we just wanna watch. Make sure we don't turn it up too high and make a giant mess. Right down. Now all those ingredients are starting to incorporate. Colors changed, definition, and there's a lot more of it now. So I can still see a few chunks right there. I'm gonna turn my speed up just a little bit. See if I can't knock out a few more of those. Go ahead and head and add some of our sour, our, all of our sour cream in. Once that's combined, we're not trying to incorporate air into the egg, so we really don't need it to go for that long of a period of time. Just till combined. For this, I'm going to actually skip the scraping down step. I'm just going to go ahead and drop in my sour cream.
back on. Looks like it's incorporated. We're going to scrape down the bowl one more time. We're going to turn it back on one more time and then we're pretty much ready to go. trying to make a coffee flavored cheesecake but I only have so much of my coffee flavored extract here so I'm gonna take a little bit of batter out of there and I'm gonna put it in this pan that I've put some more Oreo chunks in with plain batter essentially making an Oreo cheesecake then I'm gonna flavor the rest of the batter so this is where you can start to see some of the inclusions I've just put chunks of something in here and I'm putting the batter over top of it or I'm flavoring the entire batter, okay? So this is looking pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and get some of this out of here. Filling the cheesecake is really up to you. How tall do you like your cheesecake? Don't go too high, the cheesecake does rise a little bit out of the pan. So if you do want a taller cheesecake, I suggest getting a taller pan. But about three quarters of the way up the pan is usually pretty good. Yeah, about like that. We're gonna stop there. You can see my cheesecake here. Boom. And just to make it look pretty, I'm gonna add a couple, uh, just some Oreos on top here. And I'm gonna kind of press them down into the cheesecake a little bit. I don't want them to just sit on top. I want them to be in the cheesecake. I already have some at the bottom. Now I'm gonna just put some in the top here. looking pretty good all right let's get back to this cheesecake I want to attempt to flavor this coffee like I said I'm not sure if I have enough coffee extract but we're gonna find out pretty much just gonna put all this in here This could be whatever flavor you want. You want chocolate, you got a chocolate extract or a chocolate sauce, peanut butter extract, peanut butter sauce, uh, pumpkin puree, take it, flavor it, add sugar, a little bit of uh, the pumpkin spice into the pumpkin puree, and then add that into here and just turn the paddle back on. We're just gonna mix it all together. Hopefully there's enough extract in there to make it taste like coffee.
I'm gonna go ahead and taste it real quick and see what I think. It looks really dark. It smells like coffee. Sure does taste like coffee. It could use a little bit more, but it's not too terrible. Okay, so I went ahead and just flavored this, that coffee flavor, it's ready to go. And now I'm gonna go ahead and start filling it in my pans. It's important to just keep an eye when you're scooping the batter into the pan. Remember, we tried our best to keep those chunkies off the side, but you can see here, even the consistency of the cheesecake and the cream cheese batter right here is a little bit thicker than what you have at the bottom. So you really just wanna be careful to not scrape. Don't scrape the side of the bowl don't scrape the bottom of the bowl as you're scooping the batter out. And then just continue to go ahead and fill your cheesecakes. I personally don't like eating cheesecake or creme brulee the day it's made. I personally like to put it in the refrigerator. Sorry, put it in the freezer after it's fully cooked and cooled and allow it to freeze and set up completely in the freezer. Once it does set up in the freezer, it's usually easier to get out and slice cleanly so that you do have a really nice product, okay? Now this is a coffee flavored cheesecake. Right here I have chocolate ganache in a piping bag. So essentially what do I have? Uh, kind of a mocha cheesecake, right? Now this is the swirl what I'm talking about, okay? What I do is I'll just grab like ganache or something in a piping bag, and I will just swirl those fillings throughout the cheesecake, just like that. Boom, and then you're good to go. If I'm doing a chocolate raspberry cheesecake, usually I'll take like raspberry jam and chocolate ganache and piping bags and just swirl it throughout my cheesecake and go ahead and bake it off. So like I said, I don't like to eat them the day of, I like to bake them the day before, fully freeze, Bake, cool, and freeze the cheesecake so I can get it out of the pan pretty easy. Creme brulee, I just like to fully bake, cool, and then refrigerate overnight, and it allows it to set up nicely. So we made these today, and I'm going to show you what they look like tomorrow. Okay, guys? Typically, this is what I like to see when my creme brulee comes out of the oven. Light browning on top, but not too much. The bubbles, the coagulation, it changes in consistency, and then you can check it just a little bit. Check to see that it sets up. See how it's getting more solid? It's still a little flimsy, it's still a little wet, but as it sits in the refrigerator overnight, it will set up the rest of the way. So that's essentially what I'm looking for. Now we'll get it out of the water bath and let them fully cool down. Now I bake my cheesecakes a little bit lower, about 275, 280, somewhere around there. You can bump it up to 300 if you want. Just like I said, keep an eye on the browning of the tops, right? That's what I'm trying to avoid. We, we don't want brown on the top, in my opinion, and the style that I'm trying to make my cheesecakes, but I also need the egg proteins to completely coagulate throughout the center so that the cheesecake does so at a setup. So what you're looking for is you can do a little touch test on the top, making sure that it's set and it's not moving. A little bit of browning on top is good. Not a whole lot, but a little bit, at least we know it's pretty much set and ready to go. And then what you can do, if it's cool enough, you can tip your pan. A lot like the bread pudding. If you start to see it slide, it's not setting completely, you can put it back in a little bit longer. If it is staying pretty still, you know you should be pretty much good to go. So we're gonna let these cool and freeze overnight and we'll check them out tomorrow. Okay, so we're, we're gonna take a look at the creme brulees from yesterday. They went ahead, they've been baked off and they fully set overnight in the refrigerator. You can fully chill them probably about two hours, three hours, you might be able to use them, but my suggestion still is try to do them overnight. If you can, do the cook them the day before, hot water bath in the oven, and then let them chill and sit overnight, okay? Um, I have one right here that I wanna show you the consistency so you understand what you're supposed to be looking for. If it's too runny or too liquidy, then you know you did something wrong. You should see a nice, solid, yet creamy, decadent, can you see that? Filling. 
That's what it should look like. It should be a pudding consistency, nice and creamy and smooth. Mmm. Extremely refreshing, delicious flavor. But we know that's not the end, right? Creme brulee has a very specific topping, right? Creme brulee in French means burnt cream. So why does it have that in the name? Because we burn sugar on top or technically caramelize. We do not want to burn the sugar. We want to just torch it enough so that the sugar caramelizes and comes together into a solid caramel disc on top of the creme brulee. So we're gonna take turbinado sugar, turbinado sugar, and we're going to put an even coating on top. And don't be afraid to put a bunch of sugar. A little extra won't hurt. Just make sure you have a nice even coating on top. Too thick and you might have trouble caramelizing the sugar evenly, but you usually don't have to worry about that. You can see there, I got a nice even coating on top. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna torch it. Now, work quickly and evenly with the torch. I will get close and work in like circular motions on the whole creme brulee and then pull away. Let it sit out, hang out, relax a little bit. And I'll come back to it. You see the golden brown of the sugar. You don't want that to turn black. We want it to stay golden brown. As it heats and melts, it comes together into one solid piece of caramel. It's still hot right now, right? So it's still melting. Let it hang out, let it relax a little bit. And then come back, hit it again, torch, just a little bit, come off of it. Let it sit there and melt and come together. And come back and hit it again. I'm really caramel, caramelizing the center there, but maybe not so much on those edges. So I'm gonna try to hit just the edges. You grab the container and move it a little bit, work with it. Much done there. I think we're pretty good. We're gonna hit it again just a little bit more. I think we're ready to go. And now you can see that beautiful layer of caramel on top. This is meant to be done before service. You can do the creme brulees ahead of time, get them ready to go, but the caramelized topping should be done right before it's served, or it should be done at the table for the customer to see. But that's essentially what you're going for. So now you have that amazing caramel topping right there. The cream underneath is cold, so it usually caramelizes pretty quickly and um, cools it down pretty quickly and causes it to become hard. And what you should see is a solid layer of caramel on top. I don't know if you can hear the tapping. But the customer expects this caramel on top. They expect to not only have to see the caramel and smell the caramel, but they expect to have to break through the caramel. And then we get those delicious bites of that creme brulee cream with the huge pieces of caramel. Oh, delicious. Okay, so now we're gonna take a look at our cheesecake from yesterday. This is one of them, the coffee flavored cheesecake with the Oreo bottom. Like I said, I like to let it rest overnight and let the cheesecake freeze overnight for a few different reasons. One of them being, I'm not in a spring form pan. So it's kind of difficult to get this out of the pan cleanly. The best way is to freeze it so that the cheesecake is solid so that when I try to get it out of here, it remains solid and intact. As well as when it is frozen solid, it is easiest to cut into nice clean slices. So. Depending on what shape you do, you guys have seen how I do the large sheet trays, uh, the, the hotel pans of cheesecake. Those can be chopped up into triangle shapes too. You dictate how you want this cheesecake to look, but while frozen, it is, it is the easiest to keep cleanly and nice sharp slices, okay? So the first step to getting it out of a pan while it's frozen, we're gonna use our knife. I'm gonna go this way. And we're gonna just cut along the edge of the pan. Do be careful not to cut the pan. You can, as you're doing this with the knife, shave metal off the sides. And now you will have metal shavings on the side of your cheesecake. So just be careful as you're going. 
Try not to shave down into the pan. You have that piece of parchment paper on the bottom, so that should help it from sticking. Once we get that cut on the edges, we're just going to torch the top of the pan, or the bottom of the pan now, I guess, sorry. Bottom of the pan, nice and frozen, torch it a little bit. And then you should be able to pop it right out. nice solid cheesecake. I can move it around. I can play with it. And most importantly, I can cut it. Some nice clean slices. So we'll go ahead and remove that parchment paper and then we're going to go ahead and slice it. If you're having issues slicing the cheesecake, you can use your torch to warm up your knife or a nice hot, almost boiling water, a uh, pitcher full of water. You can dip your knife in and then continue to swipe your knife in between slices to keep nice and clean cuts. But this is a relatively small cheesecake, so I should be able to just get right in there. Boom. And look at that. That is gorgeous. Amazing cheesecake, nice chocolate Oreo crust. We are ready to go.